Hi everyone, welcome to the video lecture series of Theory of Automata and Formal Languages. So we are into uh, unit number 5, we are learning about Turing machine and uh, hope we have covered all the introductory topics regarding uh, Turing machine. And uh, in this particular video, we'll be looking into the different types of Turing machine or you can say variants of Turing machine, variations in Turing machine. Okay, so uh, we'll be starting off with the first topic uh, that is the other name known as uh, multiple tracks Turing machine. So in this particular uh, Turing machine, you'll be having uh, multiple tracks and I have defined a finite uh, element, finite number as K, suppose, and that is termed as K tracks, okay? So that has been defined over here, okay? Uh, K tracks, okay. Now uh, in this particular K tracks, what will be the difference is that there'll be one read and write head okay that is already in Turing machine that reads and writes all of them one by one okay and it can be simulated by a single track Turing machine as well so that means if you're having a, a single uh, if you're talking about a single, uh, normal Turing machine it have it doesn't have n number of tracks okay it is having a tape and it is having a tape head with the help of which the read and write operation can be done one after another but in case of uh, looking into the track then if you're having multiple tracks then that particular machine is known as a multiple tracks Turing machine okay so you might be having you might be thinking of like uh, already we are having a tape as the data structure and the tape head uh, as the another data structure in Turing machine right now what is this uh, track is all about what do you mean by a track down okay uh, actually the track uh, if you talk about a tape uh, in Turing machine so if you talk about the Turing machine uh, a Turing machine has a tape right a tape okay which is having cells and where uh, the data has been uh, the input string is being stored followed by some blank symbols then the tape head will work over the cells correct now this is a tape that is being used in a Turing machine but yes in order to expand this particular tape, that tape has been divided into tracks like this. We are having one more part, then we are having one more part, we are having one more part, okay. That depends on how many number of tracks we are having. This, just like I have I told you that this is a multiple tracks Turing machine, that means I have taken, think, thought of like a K track Turing machine. So this is like a three, uh, four track Turing machine, okay, where each unit is, is capable of storing a single input string correct so this is all about tracks okay uh, just i thought of like sharing to you okay now moving to the next part uh, i think multiple tracks turing machine is called is clear to everyone okay now uh, next one is your two-way infinite tape turing machine which is your uh, general way uh, general turing machine is consisting of the tape which is having both the sides uh, open and for read and for the write operation okay now what is meant, uh, I have already uh, told uh, the, it is bounded in both the directions left and right, correct? And it can be simulated by a one-way Turing machine also, where the right hand side will comprise of the blank symbols and then the tape will move from left to right and right to left, left to right, like this, okay? Then moving into the third one, third one is your multi-tape Turing machine, okay? Multi-tape Turing machine means uh, you'll be having only one a single head only, I think, yes, this is mentioned over here, by a single head only. It will be controlled but there will be multiple tapes over this particular uh, Turing machine okay and uh, if you talk about definitely if you talk about the expressive power multi tape and K track are always a same concept see multiple tapes if you if you look into the previous exercise just now I have shown it to you that a single tape has been divided into multiple tracks now if you think of the same way then there is no such big difference between multiple multiple tracks and multiple multi tape Turing machine okay as I told you single head will be there same here you will be having a one right read and write head only that reads and writes all of them one by one but here there was defined as a multiple tracks it was defined as a multi tape so I there is no such big difference between these two scenarios okay now moving to the fourth one that is multiple tape or you can say short form it is a multi tape multi head Turing machine so just like in previous one we are having multi tape there was a single head now it is controlled by multiple heads as i told you see this is an important point multiple heads i think if you talk about if you're having multi heads and multi tapes during machine and if it if, and, and here the process goes parallelly then definitely this is the most uh, 
convenient one to use but again if you think of uh, getting into this kind of uh, machine cost will be more compared to the single way or two way infinite tape correct so you have to think of this kind of machines this kind this type of turing machines based on different criteria if cost then i will be going for that if i have to do the process very fast as uh, as quickly as possible sequential order then i have to take think of a bigger uh, you can say well equipped turing machine then i would suggest a multi tape multi head turing machine is the best one correct so that depends on the scenario okay now if we talk about the simulation one how it can be simulated it can be simulated by a standard turing machine as well okay now moving to the fifth one fifth one is not multi tape not multi head not single tape or single head okay it is a multi dimensional turing machine multi dimensional turing machine means is that if you talk about dimensional wise see this is the important point it can go the tape head can go left direction the tape head can go right direction very good the tape head can go up and down so definitely this is also if you think of uh, multi dimensional turing machine it is also comprising a lot of things but yes if we talk think about the cost one it's high okay now uh, to talk about the um, simulation one yes it can be done by one dimensional turing machine is nothing but the standard turing machine as well okay okay now moving to the number 6th one that is your multi head turing machine this is not multi tape multi head this is simply multi tape multi head turing machine where it will have it will contain two or more heads to read the symbol on the same tape that means the tape may be a single one uh, comprising of two or three tracks maybe okay but the head will be more than two okay so it can be two it can be three it can be four depending on the uh, on the on, on the scenario that you are consisting of okay okay so this is the sixth one and the last one the seventh one yes i'll be going to an important turing machine as well that i will tell you after the seventh one the seventh one is known as offline turing machine okay you don't think that this is like uh, uh, the turing machine will work in Uh, without internet no no nothing like that or with, or or at the sleep sleep mode no nothing like that this type of turing machine is same as the, compared to multi tape turing machine okay but what's the difference is that its input is read only and has two end markers for input on the input tape so that becomes a very easy easy way of working and the remaining tapes are two way infinite tape so whatever tapes we are having along with this because They see we are having uh, a input is read only that is already done and has two end markers markers in the sense that it will write it for input on the tape head that means it will work like um, I think you have seen uh, Mr. Uh, Viru Shastra Budi in uh, three years right he used to write on both the hands so this is the same way it is having two end markers for inputs on the input tape and the remaining tapes that you'll be using always a two way infinite tape. okay so basically uh, if you talk about what kind of turing machines is there in the market no that's like uh, it is like multi head multi tape turing machine sorry multi tape multi head turing machine multi dimensional turing machine these are the very important ones okay and the most important part that i have that i thought of like including into this is universal turing machine okay so if you talk about universal turing machine uh, the universal turing machine you can say the super set of any turing machine okay so generally if i talk about the description of universal turing machine it's it's determined by a suppose and suffix tm so this is just a representation okay you can represent by any way just you need to understand make make others understand what universal turing machine is all about okay so it comprises of two things one is m and the other one is w m is nothing but the turing machine okay which can be anything it can be multi head it can be multi tape it can be multi track okay so and the m generally accepts uh, the strings that belongs to w and it's always a turing recognizable that means that it's a turing recognizable because on changing w the 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 turing machine may does these three important uh, type uh, important steps one is always accept and halt it may reject and halt it may go into a loop that means it will never halt correct so these three scenarios are very uh, very convenient for any turing machine correct but if i ask you a small difference between what is the difference between turing machine and a universal turing machine i will give a very few good example that if you think of a program 
okay if you think of particular program let it be done in c let it be done in java okay that you can think of being accepted by tuning machine and if you think of a whole computer then you can think of that can be accepted by the universal tuning machine that means any kind of programs let it be c let it be java let it be python okay i'm just giving an example all comprising all these languages are possible to be accepted by a computer that is nothing but the universal tuning machine just an example okay so i think i have mentioned the point over here okay fine a universal turing machine can run any turing machine on some input that i have already told you that's why i told you the superset of uh, any turing machine correct so this is an important point next uh, a turing machine can be compared to a program c just now i have told the same example it takes some input and generates some output and on the other hand a turing machine can be com compared to a computer it takes it takes what any program that's i told you and run it with some input and generate some output okay regardless of not confined to a particular program okay that's why i told you that universal turing machine is considered to be the superset of all the turing machines okay and uh, finally these two points you should keep in mind that whatever inputs uh, what what are the inputs to be done to give uh, for the turing machine one definitely the description of turing machine must exist okay and the input string okay and action done by the utm is nothing but the simulation of all the turing machines okay so this is all about your universal turing machine is an important topic if you are looking for any kind of university exams or if you're of your or if you are comparing or if you are going for any competitive exams universal turing machine is an important topic okay and uh, i think uh, in looking into the different types of turing machine we have seen almost uh, seven eight types including universal turing machine and which comprises of multiple tracks multiple tape multiple head yes multi tape multi head turing machine offline turing machine and finally universal turing machine which is nothing but the superset of all the turing machines so i think it is uh, clear to everyone uh, that we have almost completed maximum of the topic which is introduction so which are which are introduction to a particular turing machine but yes we are left out with one more topic which is uh, what are the different types of languages being accepted by a turing machine so in the next video lecture we will look into one topic which is known as the uh, the languages recognized by the turing machine okay so hope you if you are if you having any suggestions or any comments or any queries you can comment down below and uh, do hit the bell icon and please subscribe my channel so that you can get the updated videos as well thank you for watching